Hello students, today we will discuss about the Waldeyer's ring. Waldeyer's ring is actually a component of malt. So, we will discuss that what is the meaning of malt. Malt is actually known as mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. What is malt? Mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. So, whenever we are having the lymphatic system in the body, you are having some uncapsulated collection of lymphoid tissue. So, the first and most important thing about the mucosa associated lymphoid tissue is that they are uncapsulated. That means when you will see the lymph node, when you will see the lymph node, they are characteristically surrounded by the capsule. But when we are talking about the mucosa associated lymphatic tissue, they are not having any kind of capsular layer outside. So, they are uncapsulated collection. Second and most important thing is that these mucosa associated lymphoid tissue are present in the mucosa that is sub epithelial or in the sub mucosa of alimentary tract, respiratory tract and genito urinary tract. So, in these places like alimentary tract, respiratory tract, you will have the sub epithelial or the mucosa associated lymphatic tissue and they are classified or they are known as GALT that is gut associated when we are talking about the alimentary tract and bronchus associated when we are talking about the respiratory system and there are two sets of collection is seen in the sub epithelial layer. So, whenever you are writing the question on your Waldeyer's ring, this is my sincere advice that you always include this malt into that short note because your Waldeyer's ring is actually an example of mucosa associated lymphatic tissue. So, what are the examples of this malt? There are first example is Waldeyer prepharyngeal lymphoid ring. So, today we are going to see this Waldeyer's ring and this Waldeyer ring is present in the pharynx which is again the submucosal uh, in position and the second and most commonly asked question in your exam that is your Peyer's patches and Peyer's patches is a classical feature of ileum. So, these are the two basic examples of the mucosa associated lymphatic tissue. Now, the another important thing is what this malt will do. What is the function of the malt? So, the overlying epithelium of these sites are able to sample the antigen into the lumen and translocate them to the underlying lymphoid aggregation. What does it mean? Suppose this is our lumen. Now, in, in this lumen, you have this is the mucosa. Now, in this mucosa, there is a collection of lymphoid aggregations. Now, this is the collection of lymphoid aggregation. Now, the cells which is overlying this lymphoid aggregation is known as M cells. The cells, those are overlying particularly this area are known as M cells. Now, these M cells are known as antigen presenting cells and whenever you are having any kind of the pathogen inside this lumen, these cells will present this antigen to these lymphocytes or the collection of lymphoid follicles. So, the important thing is that these the overlying epithelium that means these M cells which are overlying cells of these sites able to sample the antigen in the lumen and translocate these antigen to the underlying lymphoid aggregation. So, lymphoid aggregations are able to do the phagocytosis of these antigens which are present here on these M cells. So, it helps in the defense mechanism of the respiratory system as well as the alimentary system. Now, what is the function of, so exact function of the malt? So, there are overlying epithelium. I told you they are known as M cells. Through these M cells, the antigen material is brought into contact with the sub epithelial situated lymphoid follicle. So, when the antigen will come, this antigen will present to the M cell. So, there are the M cells. These M cells will transform these uh, take these uh, antigen into the sub epithelially placed your lymphoid follicles. Now, inside the lymphoid follicles, you have the germinal center. 
Now, these germinal center is a site of B lymphocyte. You have rich supply of B lymphocyte of these in this germinal center. Now, these B cells, when stimulated, they change the plasma cell and produce large number of antibodies. So, what will happen? That when the antigen is presenting to the M cell, that antigen will reach to the lymphoid follicle by these M cells. Then, lymphoid follicles will produce the antibodies because they are having large number of B cell. Now, this antibody is helpful in the defense mechanism. So, bacteria and virus are now phagocytes by the macrophages and they are destroyed. So, this help in the defense mechanism of the respiratory as well as alimentary system. So, whenever you are writing the function of the Waldeer ring, this is the function of the Waldeer ring because Waldeer ring is also mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. Then, what exactly is the Waldeer ring? Where you will find the Waldeer ring and what is the formation of Waldeer ring? So, Waldeer ring is surrounded or it surrounds the commencement of the air and food pipe that is your upper end of your respiratory tract and alimentary tract. So, when you will see the section of your head and neck, you will realize that in the posterior wall of the pharynx, you are having a nasopharyngeal tonsil. You are having on the lateral wall of the oropharynx, the palatine tonsil. On the posterior wall of the tongue, you are having the lingual tonsil. So, these tonsils are actually the lymphatic aggregation which are present at the upper end of respiratory system and alimentary system. So, these aggregation of the lymphoid tissue in the mucosa is known as Waldeer's ring. So, it is a mucosa associated lymphatic tissue. So, what are the components of the Waldeer's ring? So, first component is palatine tonsil. Now, this is the section which you can see that we have cut the posterior wall of the pharynx and after opening the posterior wall of the pharynx, you can see the anterior wall where you can appreciate that these are the palatine tonsil. So, this is the palatine tonsil which you can see through the oropharynx. Then, in the upper part, you can see that this is the posterior nasal opening and Behind the nasal openings, posterior part of the nasal opening, you have this part of the tubal elevation where you have the aggregation of the lymphoid follicles is known as tubal tonsil. So, these are the two tubal tonsils. While near the junction of the roof and posterior wall, you have the collection of the lymphatic aggregations is known as nasopharyngeal tonsil. So, you can see that there is a nasopharyngeal tonsil. Below that, you have the pair of lingual tonsil. Below that, you have the pair of palatine tonsil and on the posterior side of the tongue, which is forming the anterior wall of your oropharynx, you are having multiple small small nodules and these nodules are known as lingual tonsil. So, if you will join all of them, you can form a ring shape structure and this ring shape structure is known as Waldeer's ring. So, what are the components of the Waldeer ring? Pair of palatine tonsil lingual tonsil, pharyngeal tonsil and a pair of tubal tonsil. All of them collectively form a circle is known as Waldeer's ring. Now, there is a one important information which you should always keep in mind that when we are talking about the tongue. Now, see this is the sulcus. Now, behind this sulcus you have the posterior one third part of the tongue and in this posterior part of the tongue you don't have the papilla. So, this is the important thing that there is no papilla behind the sulcus in the tongue. Whatever the papillas are present, they all present in this anterior two-third of the tongue, but not in the posterior one-third. So, why posterior one-third of tongue is rough? The only answer is that it is nodular in appearance because of the underlying mass of aggregation of the lymphoid follicles which are known as lingual tonsil. So, you have to keep this concept in your mind that whenever we are talking about the roughness of the tongue, the anterior two-third tongue is rough because of the papilla, while posterior one-third of the tongue is rough but not because of papilla, it is because of the lymphoid aggregation. So, this lingual tonsil become the part of Waldeer ring. Now, in this diagram, you can see where is the component of Waldeer ring? So, this is the your roof and the posterior wall. At the junction of the roof and posterior wall, you can appreciate that there is a presence of 
the nasopharyngeal tonsil. So this is the site of nasopharyngeal tonsil. Then you will have on the both side this elevation is known as torus tuberius and here you have the tubal tonsil. In the posterior part of the tongue you will have here that uh, your lingual tonsil and in the both side of oropharynx you have almond shaped palatine tonsil. So when you will draw a line you will find that it is going to form a complete circle and that is known as Waldeer's ring. So at the end of this small class I hope now you can write down the Waldeer's ring in the exam. You can now understand what is mucosa associated lymphoid aggregations and the important thing is what is the function of Waldeer ring and its component. So this is all about this class. Thank you.